Good morning and welcome to our service. A welcome to those who are here. There are more and more seats every week. It's fantastic and uh, it's good to see you. And a welcome to those who are uh, joining us online, whether uh, in, at, at the time of broadcasting or later on. It's great to have you and I hope you feel part of our service uh, today. A couple of uh, things to draw your attention to before we, uh, we go into our service. Um, Alpha is starting on the uh, 30th of September. So uh, the challenge uh, to start thinking about is who can you invite along to that to start praying perhaps for three people you know and uh, that they would accept an invitation to uh, join the Alpha course. So that starts with the uh, the initial uh, e event, and uh, and then obviously the uh, the ongoing uh, weekly event. So information is available on the new sheep, and a sign up is on the website. The other thing that's happening is the, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury is coming to Guildford Diocese, uh, and there are two particular events uh, to draw your attention to. On the 24th of September, there's an evening with Justin Welby for church members uh, at Lakeside uh, at 8 p.m. And then on the 26th of September, there's a big questions event for us to invite family and friends where the Archbishop will address uh, some of the big questions around faith and the world. And that is in the Aldershot Empire Hall uh, uh, from 10 to 11.15 in the morning. So a, a great taster there, perhaps, if people, uh, your friends, uh, that uh, bring them along to that and uh, perhaps they'll consider Alpha afterwards. So um, again, there's information on the news sheet and links to reserve tickets uh, for those events. Let's uh, take a moment and prepare for our worship of God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to see the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. So as our first hymn tells us to do, let's stand up and bless the Lord and praise his name this morning.
Please be seated. I was listening to a podcast this week talking about the time when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. And Peter saying, wash all of me. And Jesus saying, no, I only need to wash your feet. As we go out about the paths of this life, our feet get dirty. We go places where we shouldn't have gone. We spend our time doing things that we shouldn't. And we don't follow where all the time where Jesus leads. So we need to come back to God and say sorry. We need our feet washed this morning. Let's take a, a moment to consider some things and bring them before God. And then we'll join together in confession. The last line, when I say, forgive us, please respond with, O oh God, have mercy. Father, the consistency of your caring love never ceases to amaze us. We confess that our lives are often careless and sometimes loveless. When our love for you is weak, forgive us. O oh God, have mercy. When our concern for those in need is inadequate, forgive us. O oh God, have mercy. When our giving is meager and thoughtless, forgive us. O oh God, have mercy. We confess we are often self-centered and sometimes heartless. When we distrust the generosity of others or suspect their motives, forgive us. O oh God, have mercy. When we lack the vision and dedication to bring relief and care to the hungry, the homeless, the displaced person, or the refugee, forgive us. O oh God, have mercy. We say together, help us, O oh God, by your grace, to become agents of your transforming love for the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. And the collect for this Sunday. Father, giver of all gifts, bring joy to our hearts through your Holy Spirit, that the world may believe the good news which comes to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sound and sing our psalm this morning, taken famously from Psalm 24. Please stand.
Please do be seated. Psalm 23, obviously. Sorry. <laughs> the reading is from Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a name, my man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able because of the crowd, since he was a short man. So, running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus, since he was about to pass that way. <clears throat> when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, because today I must stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain. He's gone to lodge with a sinful man. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor, Lord. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Today, salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pam. Uh, good morning to you here in church and to you at home. It's good to be with you. Uh, Stephen Linton, one of the licensed lay ministers here at St. Peter's. Let's begin with a prayer. Father, we pray that we may know your presence and hear what you have to say to us this morning as we study your word and as we seek to follow you. And we pray that we may not hear my words, but we may hear what you are saying to each of us individually. Amen. Well, our Sunday sermons during September will be looking at four encounters of Jesus under the title, Jesus, Friend of Sinners. And today we have Zacchaeus. The story is well known, not least, I suspect, because of the simple children's chorus that many of us will have sung in Sunday school. It's been going round in my head all week. Do you remember it? Now, Zacchaeus was a very little man, and a very little man was he. I think some of you know it. So what is there for us this morning in the story of Zacchaeus? I think it has things to say to us as individuals and also as a church. Firstly, then, as individuals, we note in verse 1 that Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And if you look down chapter 19, you'll see that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem for the last time. The events we normally celebrate on Palm Sunday are only a few days away with his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on donkey just before Passover and his betrayal, trial, and crucifixion. So this was Zacchaeus' last chance to encounter Jesus, though he didn't know that. It was an opportunity not to be missed. Jesus, uh, Zacchaeus had clearly heard about Jesus and was interested enough to want to see him in person, not, it seems, to actually speak to him, but to look from a safe distance. And so he scrambled up the sycamore tree in order to see over the crowd. And for us this morning, today, is an opportunity to encounter God. And the prayer we've just prayed is was asking that God speak to each of us this morning. That should be one of the reasons we're here today, to listen to what God is saying to each of us as individuals. It's not likely to be our last opportunity, but we don't know that any more than Zacchaeus did. 
And like Zacchaeus, we may prefer to avoid a direct encounter, rather to take a, a look from a distance, reserving judgment, as it were. But the question remains, are we seeking that encounter? Are we listening to what God has to say to us? And secondly, we see that despite Zacchaeus's reluctance, Jesus takes the initiative. He stops, he looks up, he calls Zacchaeus by name. He values him as an individual, not just as one of the crowd. He singles him out, and Jesus calls him down from the tree. He invites himself to a meal. And although Zacchaeus only wanted to take a look from a distance, Jesus puts him on the spot. But it's still up to Zacchaeus to respond. He could have stayed where he was, hidden in the branches. He could have declined the hospitality request by making excuses. Sorry, Jesus, I'm too busy. There's no food. The house isn't tidy. The shops are closed. Or he might have been too embarrassed to take Jesus into his home. And maybe in the same way, I suggest that God comes to us this morning as individuals and calls us by name. We too may have been avoiding an encounter, but he singles us out from the crowd. He calls us from wherever we may have been hiding. He offers to come and share in our personal circumstances. What do we say? Do we make excuses? Too busy, lives not ready to receive him, concerned at what those around might think? Or do we welcome the chance to hear what God is saying to us. For Zacchaeus, this was a life-changing moment. He took the opportunity. He accepted the challenge of Jesus to allow him into his home, and as a result, his life was changed. In his case, it affected his business affairs and his relationships because he was a tax collector, and as such was a despised collaborator with the Roman authorities. He was regarded as the lowest of the low, making personal profit out of working for the hated occupying armed forces. And we can only imagine the shocked horror of the crowds as Jesus invites himself to Zacchaeus' home. Verse 7 tells us that the crowd began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus responded by promising to make good any wrong financial dealings from the past and to give half of his wealth to the poor. For him, the challenge of Jesus was to put right his misuse of his position for personal gain and to use his wealth wisely in caring for those in need. For us this morning, there will be other challenges to face. That might involve a change of attitude, a change of direction, rethinking some aspect of our priorities, but it will be personal to us. And the challenge of the story of Zacchaeus is to respond to God's invitation, to allow God's way to be the basis for our daily lives, not just here in church, but in the way we live, the way we work, our dealings with others, our attitudes, our priorities. And that might involve some painful changes, perhaps a degree of restitution, putting things right that have been wrong. For Zacchaeus, that involved considerable financial loss as he paid back fourfold those he treated fraudulently and also gave away half of his considerable wealth to the poor. For us, the challenge may be different. It could affect any aspect of our lives. But that challenge remains to listen to what God is saying to us individually and then to respond gladly. But I think there's also a challenge in this story for the church, locally and nationally. The overall title of our sermons is Jesus, Friend of Sinners. The crowd called Zacchaeus a sinner because of his job as a collaborator with the Roman authorities. Jesus has gone to be the guest of a sinner, they said. Jesus, however, saw past that prejudiced response to Zacchaeus' real needs. Our passage ends with Jesus saying, Today, salvation has come to this house 
because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The crowd rejected Zacchaeus, but Jesus called him a son of Abraham, one of them, one of God's people, whatever his job, whatever he had done. And I think the challenge to us as a church is to rethink how we relate to and welcome those outside church. Because here we see Jesus deliberately seeking out someone who was despised and an outcast in society, a collaborator working for the hated Romans. Have you noticed how that pattern is uh, present in the life and example of Jesus? He mostly sought out among his society those who were despised or rejected. Here we have a tax collector, but he also welcomed a prostitute, a woman who was ceremonial unclean due to hemorrhage, a despised Samaritan woman, people with mental health problems, the son of a Roman centurion, and he praised the poor widow as she gave that tiny sum of money. And Jesus explained this by saying he didn't call the righteous, but sinners. And in saying that, he didn't mean that those around him were indeed so perfect that they didn't need his challenge. He meant those who thought of themselves as righteous, self-righteous indeed, who prided themselves on how good they were, so they thought they had no need of the message that Jesus brought. And that example of Jesus, to seek out those who were despised or ignored by the self-righteous religious leaders of the day, is surely a challenge for the church nationally and for us here at St. Peter's. While, of course, there are exceptions, the church is largely composed of middle-class, respectable people, and increasingly of an older age group. There are whole swathes of our society who regard us as irrelevant. But many of those are just the type of people whom Jesus chose to mix with. He welcomed children, women, people from other racial groups, the poor, the cheats, disabled people, those whose sexual lives were far from ideal, a prostitute and an adulterer. Zacchaeus was an unpopular tax collector, but Jesus said, this man too is a son of Abraham. He's one of us, one whom God values, one made in God's image. So what we can certainly say is that Jesus would have welcomed everyone. There are groups in our society who we may find it difficult to relate to, perhaps people from other racial groups or religions, refugees or asylum seekers, those addicted to drugs or alcohol, the homeless, those with LGBT lifestyles, and straight people who don't fit into our patterns of sexual behavior. But they too are made in God's image. They, too, are loved and welcomed by him. And so the church's divided opinions about the rightness or wrongness of certain types of behavior or lifestyle is no excuse for us failing to welcome everyone as Jesus did. When we label this series as Jesus, Friend of Sinners, it would be easy for us to assume that we're thinking about those whom I've just mentioned, those who are different from us, those we find it difficult to welcome. But we are all sinners. We've all failed to follow God's way in one way or another. Jesus, friend of sinners, applies to us here this morning. To think otherwise is to join the crowd in their self-righteousness. But Jesus said, but he hadn't come to call the self-righteous, but sinners, us too. Now, I'm sure that we feel that we as a church are indeed welcoming, and in many ways we are. But in reality, how would we react to a refugee, an addict, a homeless person, an openly same-sex couple who joined us in church this morning? Would they feel safe to come into our church? I'm not sure they would. And for many young people today, the church no longer seems relevant, out of touch, self-righteous, quick to condemn. 
And maybe that's true of some of us. Are we ready to love and welcome whoever God sends our way? We're hoping to set up a Christians Against Poverty service. We need to keep praying for the right person to lead that. And when it's up and running, it will be offering help to anyone from our community with problems, with debt, poverty, insolvency, other money problems, some of which are related to lifestyle factors such as drugs, alcohol, gambling. That service will be offered to show God's love for everyone. And some of those people might decide to join us in church. How will we welcome them? Will they feel out of place or will they feel overwhelmed by a loving acceptance in God's name? Remember that Jesus told us not to judge others, was very critical of the self-righteous and told them to remove the plank from their own eyes before taking the speck out of the eye of another. And so this morning, God invites us all of whatever background to follow him. He calls us as individuals, all made in God's image, all loved by him equally. He wants to come into our lives, enjoy our hospitality. He wants us to stop hiding behind our own prejudices. He challenges us in our thinking to be willing to change and to show that love, that God-like love to all whom we meet. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love, your amazing, unconditional love, and for the example of Jesus. And we thank you. Would you call us whatever our circumstances, and you want us to follow you. So help us to be ready to respond to that call to show that love to everyone we meet this week, without exception, without exclusion. Amen. So as we continue uh, to respond to God's word and to the message brought, let's uh, stand and sing of the love of Jesus Christ that welcomes all.
Remain standing as we join together in our creed. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we come to our prayers of intercession. As we start our time of prayer now, perhaps think, is God calling us? Is there something that God is calling us down from our tree? Is there a change we need to make? And for us individually and as a community here, are we welcoming? Are we opening ourselves out to to bring in those who are lost? Bring in those from different lifestyles, with different burdens and different difficulties. Oh God, we ask that you, by the work of your Spirit, will be, will be speaking to us. Lord, that you would be challenging us, encouraging us, enabling us, Lord. That we would reflect Jesus in our welcome, in our exclusion, inclusion here. Lord, that they may see Jesus and salvation that they have through him, that they may Know the love that is available through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thinking of our world, we consider Afghanistan um, open doors who we support as our starts to be praying some specific things about Afghanistan. So let's lift uh, that country. But we pray for the situation in Afghanistan. In some ways, it's almost beyond our our knowing what to pray. And yet you are the God of all things. Lord, we pray for wisdom for people in Afghanistan on how to survive, Lord. Pray for all the citizens of that country as they respond to this change. But Lord, especially we pray for our, our brothers and sisters in Christ and how they deal with the interrogations and the brutalities that may come. But we pray as well for the children of Afghanistan, praying for the schools and the education programs, Lord, that somehow they may function. Lord, we pray that you, your hand will be over all the children to preserve their dignity and wellness. Lord, we pray that we will be those who are raised up, who will guard children's safety and fight for their protection from all kinds of abuses. Lord, that your hand will be over the children of Afghanistan and the people who will fight for them. We pray also for health and wellness as medicines uh, are in short supply and as food is taken first by the Taliban for the fighters. And we pray that the uh, infrastructure of the country will continue to operate and clean water will continue to be available. We pray for those who work in medicine, that you would be with them and guard them. Oh, we go on. We lift that whole situation to you. 
and ask that you would be with them. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray as well for all those who are impacted by storms in the United States and other places and and other severe weather events throughout the world. But we pray for those who are mourning loved ones, those who are rebuilding lives, those who are feeling that their life and their livelihood is now unstable. Be near them and with them. May your church in those situations be a light. We pray for wisdom on all those who are involved in decisions on dealing with climate change and the effects of climate change. And that we all would consider where we fit into that situation. Oh God, bless our planet as we deal with these things. In Jesus' name, amen. This week, uh, schools are returning. Some may have already returned, and then in a few weeks, universities uh, will start up. Well, we pray for all teachers and lecturers as they return to their work. Lord, that you'd give them wisdom and energy as they start their new terms. And Lord, we pray for pupils and students as well as they return, praying especially for those who are starting in new situations. Lord, that you be with them as they make new friends in new communities, Lord. Lord, we pray uh, that there would be less disruption this year, even as COVID still goes around. Lord, that uh, there wouldn't be disruptions that we've seen to education, that people would be able to get on with their lives. And Lord, we pray for those uh, from our own uh, church community, Lord, who are either starting new places or or going to university again, Lord, that they would be able to find uh, communities of faith to encourage them, to support them, and to enable them to live out as you have called them. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We're praying also uh, in terms of our mission links for Hazel and Martin Frost working in Argentina. Lord, we thank you for Hazel and Martin and their family and those that they have welcomed into their house and their family community. Lord, we pray for them as they're busy preaching in the church and leading Bible studies, that you would be with them and empowering them in that work. Lord, that they may speak your truth and your gospel. We pray also for the children as they continue to do homeschooling there. And Lord, that that uh, would work out for them, that they'd be able to get into routines and study, even if that is disruptive. Lord, we pray, as we prayed for here, Lord, that in Argentina, schools may be able to return and uh, that pupils will be able to get to a stable place again. Lord, we pray for Argentina as it continues to roll out its vaccine program and fights COVID through the winter season. Lord, that you would be blessing that country. Lord, we pray for opportunities for Hazel as she's uh, involved in scout and riding camps. Lord, that uh, you would be with her as she does that and that you would enable those even with COVID. Lord, we lift Hazel and Martin and the whole family to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thinking of our own community here in St. Peter's, we pray for those who are sick, struggling, and bereaved, especially praying for the, the friends and family of Derek Twig. Let's spend some time in quiet, lifting up names to the Lord into his care and his hand. Oh God, we commit these people to your care and your compassion. We pray for those that are comforting them, that are helping heal them, that are supporting them. 
And Lord, that they would know you even in the midst of trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer as we bring our prayers to God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we prepare to go out, we stand and sing to the praise and glory of God again. My God, how wonderful thou art. So in knowledge of all that God has done for us, we go out into the world. Let's join together in the blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.